think this is 97, if memory serves. Rock. Okay. Seminar in philosophy. Imagine this. You're getting your university level philosophy course combined with an NLP course free. Can you, can you top that? Actually, I'll tell you, you know what really annoys me, but seriously pisses me off, is the amount of money that universities charge and the barriers they place in the way of people who truly want to learn. And then when you get there and you sit down, very often the sheer badness, the sheer dreadfulness of the quality of the teaching. An uninspired, droning, boring, workmanlike teaching by tenured professors who should have been put out to pasture back in the Crimean War. Rambling on about stuff they never gave a damn about in the first place just because it's a it's a job dude. That that really does not sit well with me. And it did not sit well with me in my pay to play educational period. I found that I found that offensive in the extreme, but that's the way the system is, and I think that's what motivated me to go outside of the system and start creating paths to knowledge and channels to understanding that were free of those structures. I don't know the minute the minute money gets involved, we'll have to come up with you know some kind of George Simmel like thinking, uh, the philosophy of money. The, the minute money and bureaucratic structures get involved. Everything just tends to get totally weird or go to hell, depending on how it's put together. Anyway, so uh, I always enjoy a good mini rant. It helps me warm up my glands. And you can't really do a good job with that warm glands, can you? What are the properties? What are the properties of X? What is, what are, what is X one of the properties or among the properties of? This problem of properties. What are the properties of content? What are the properties of process? What are the properties of it? What are the properties of consciousness? What are the properties of unconsciousness? What are the properties of honesty? What are the properties of criminality? What are the properties of honor? What are the properties of disgrace? So these are these are fundamental. These are. Uh, the questions really that the whole architecture of philosophy became built on. And we're, in a way we're going back, we're, we're drilling down once again back to the, the, the beginning points and maybe going off in our own directions. So the next question that came up was what, what is this an example of? Okay, And the, the uh, inversion of that question is what are examples of this? And examples and components, you say, well, what is this a component of? What are components of this? We often tend to blur and mix, mix and match examples and components. Um, once you get down, this is a very important technical point, but a useful one when you get into this idea of well, what are examples of, often you get to a point where you can't, you can't go one logical level tighter and find something that is a universal example for something else. So you end up getting moving sort of naturally from the domain of examples to the domain of components or parts or pieces of something. So it's not like you're just going to be able to, to, to coast all the way down this, this smooth gradient of larger examples to finer examples to finer examples. You're probably going to go from examples to components to fragments to bits to atoms kind of thing. Now I've got a really good question for you. This is a, a this is one of those really wonderful knots that comes up. Well, you know, we had to ask the question, what, what is this an example of, right? Well, how about this? What are the properties of an example? Okay. And is that quite the same thing? I'm not sure as that asking what is an example of an example? Um, because you can give many examples, and at that point, the, it becomes so circular. I think there's a level of circularity where discussion simply becomes useless. It just becomes sort of this, this giant mouse wheel spinning around in the mind. But 
you can kind of get off that mouse wheel and into something a little more operable and useful if you say, well, all right, instead of asking what is an example of an example, what are, what are the properties of an example? I think this goes back to something called the only and every test. So an example of something will be a case where every example, we have to refer to the, the class of examples, but every example of something, okay, will be, will be such that there is an only test. Only examples of this will bring together this number of aspects and properties and qualities. And that we get in some very, very slippery phenomenological term there. But there's an only test. So only an example of XYZ will have a certain combinations of, say, physical facts, properties, aspects, interpretations, generalities surrounding it. And every example will have those generalities, properties, sides, aspects. So it's an only in every test. And it's a very imperfect response. But we have to say, if we're looking for an example, we have to find something which every instantiation, every version of that example will share certain features. And only an example will share all of those features put together in that way. Very, very imperfect and probably very unsatisfying answer. But nonetheless, I think it's a legitimate question that deserves legitimate thinking. The only and every test of what are the properties of an example. And that I think also tends to flow to an idea of what does that mean to you? What, what does an example of something mean to you? So that kind of brings it up to a, a different logical level. So, um, you know, what, what does an example of, of, of patriotism mean to you? Then puts that into a larger container. What is this, what is this contained by? Meaning, I think you might think of meaning as a, as a kind of a container for what we place examples in. Um, what does, uh, what does a certain uh, trial or some kind of public scandal, what, what does that mean to you? Well, you could say the public scandal is an example of hypocrisy being brought to justice, okay? That's an example of hypocrisy being brought to justice or hypocrisy being exposed, which could be a fairly neutral event. But you could say, well, what does it mean to you? that hypocrisy has been exposed. Uh, Tiger Woods, fantastic example, okay? What is Tiger Woods an example of? And to different interpretive frames, Tiger Woods can be an example of many different things. And then you could say, well, what did those examples mean to you? Bring then a different degree of the container around what does Tiger Woods as an impeccable master of the game of golf mean to you? versus what does Tiger Woods, the philandering, um, the philandering party dude, mean to you? And then you could ask even a more high logical level, kind of collapse the anchor kind of question, well, what does, what, what do both of those, those interpretations of Tiger Woods happening to both simultaneously exist? mean to you? What does, you might say, what does the contradiction of Tiger Woods mean to you? So you can bring it up and you can use that even by using just the term, what does that mean to you? There can be an implicit collapse of an anchor in that. Okay, so we are, we are very slowly working down this list, but you can see that there's a, there's a lot of power and a lot of leverage. Remember that wonderful word, a lot of leverage and a lot of getting yourself out of corners you've been painted into by the effective and very, even very elegant and efficient use of these tools versus trundling along with this, this old school toolbox that people have been using.